Hello, hello. Pardon me while I set up. This is the first time I've gone live on YouTube. So I'm still getting used to the whole setup. Hello, Mr. Crazy Man. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Hello, Lizard. Hey, Alex. How's everyone doing? All right. So, I'm glad you guys can hear me. Welcome to the first of potentially many more YouTube live streams. Today, I was planning on just putting a computer together. I had a lot of these random parts laying around. Hadn't put too much thought into it, but just wanted to build one. Also, I need a, a built computer for one of the next videos that I'm making. And so I figured, since I needed to build one anyway, might as well do it on stream. So I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining me this evening or morning, wherever you are. All right, so to build this, we're going to start with putting as much stuff on uh, installing as much stuff in the motherboard as we can before transferring the motherboard into the case. Um, the case right now is sitting behind me because it's a little large. It's not too large. It's just a, you know, a mid-size case. But for the build today, we're going to go an Intel build. We have an Intel i5-9600KF. The K means that it can be overclocked, and the F means that it does not have onboard um, graphics. So we need a graphics card, discrete graphics card which in this case is a GeForce 1070 EVGA. And on top of that, we have our motherboard, which is a Z390 Phantom Gaming LGA 1151, compatible with our Intel processor. Two sticks of Vengeance LPX RAM, both DDR4 2400 megahertz. I'll also update um, a description of all these parts after this live ends, I think I can do that. Um, just so you guys have them. And then for storage, we're just gonna use, we might not even actually get to the Windows part as long as we can get it to boot. That's all I'm really looking for right now. But for storage, in case we did want to, I have a WD NVMe SSD, um, which I think still has Windows on it. It's not wiped, but past Mr. Lisa wrote that. Um, and then for a cooler, we don't have anything super crazy right now. We're just using some a little better than stock Cooler Master cooler. Um, and for our power supply, we have a Corsair RM650i. So this guy is completely modular. You can see, hopefully I have all the right cables there. I pulled this from an existing machine which had some of these um, you know, custom cables. So, um, hold on, sorry, I'm missing a lot of comments. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of people here. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Hello, Mab. Hello, Daniel. Hello, everyone else that I'm missing everyone's names. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Okay, so like I said, here are all the parts. I will update a description of all of the parts with the listings um, afterwards. Um, but I don't think I have the capability of doing that right now. All right, shall we get into this? Let's do it. Let's just go for it. All right. Also got a got a very fresh thermal paste. I'm actually running a little low. You guys would not believe how much thermal paste I go through. Here's I, I've I've kept a handful of like all the empty thermal pastes containers that I that I've gone through. Here's just a portion of them. Gone through quite a bit. This is shouldn't belong here. This is the, the thermal paste graveyard. Unfortunately, have many more, many more containers will end up there <laughs> if I continue making the, all these videos. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Um, let's, uh, let's, I wanna prop this up actually. So I'm just gonna grab, um, and, and what's a box I can grab within reaching distance. All right, I'm gonna grab a different motherboard box. I like propping up the motherboard so it's not on the direct wood, simply because when I'm pressing down on it, I don't like to damage the table. I'm not too worried about the motherboard itself. It's more for not, more for not damaging my, my table, to be honest. 
Tim Fred, hey, how you doing? Hi, everyone. Hey, is the mic okay? Oh, am I getting trolled? Probably getting trolled. <laughs> um, all right, okay. So here we have the motherboard. First thing we'll do is let's let's plop in the uh, the CPU. So let's do this. We have our Intel i5 right here, 9600KF. Taken out of the protective clamshell. I haven't done too many tests with these types of clamshells. I've done a lot more tests with the AMD clamshells because the AMD chips, especially the newer ones, they have all the they have PGA as opposed to LGA. So the PGA being the pin grid array, this is land grid array. You can see there's it's all it's all flat here. You have all these connective pads. Um, so it's a lot harder to damage an Intel processor as it is a Ryzen processor because of all those delicate pins. But regardless, we'll plop this guy down. What we're looking for here is, as you can see, there's one corner, in this case, the bottom left, that has a single golden triangle. And the rest don't. So uh, it's a little hard to see here. Sorry, it's not focusing perfectly. But in that bottom left, there's a golden triangle. The bottom right, there's a little dot. Top right, little dot. Top left, a little larger of a dot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that golden triangle and we're going to align that with the one triangle corner of the socket. Let me see if I can bring this a little closer now. So this is the socket. This is where the CPU connects into the motherboard. And this is a bit more subtle. But if you can see in the bottom left-hand corner here, you see how the corner has a little cutout. So it's not a perfect right angle. There's a little bit of cutout there, whereas every other one of the corners is a full corner. And so that's the indication that that is the the right place that we want that we need to align that golden corner so there we go we take that golden corner and we plop it right down into here there shouldn't we shouldn't need any additional pressure pressure we shouldn't have to force that in that should really just set in and i think i missed um like a, a donation so thank you for that that's actually the first donation that i've ever received ever, ever. <laughs> so i really appreciate that oh, i'm trying to figure out a way that i can read it uh, let me hold on. Let me scroll up for a second because I really appreciate that. Connor Austin donated five dollars. Holy crap! Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. I really appreciate that. Okay, so um, you know we aligned those corners to install this CPU. And the thing is to note is that if you're building a computer for the first time, uh, and, you're, and you're maybe worried about this step because this is one of the steps that I was worried about too of am I installing it the, the correct orientation. A lot of these motherboards, and every actually every single motherboard has this mechanism in place, which is really just the design of the socket, that will prevent you from putting it in the wrong way. So in this case, you know we know the bottom left is the correct orientation. If we were to just turn it 90 degrees, so that the golden triangle is in the top left, and we try to install it. In this case, it's, it might be a little hard to see from the angle that you guys. Here, let me see if I can get it a little closer. In this case, you can see that it doesn't actually perfectly fit. You can see in the back left, it's not flush with the rest of the socket. And that's because there's these little gaps, these little bumps in the socket that line up with the bumps and the gaps in the CPU. So if you're if you're building a, a computer for the first time and you're a little concerned that you're not putting it in the correct orientation, just know that you shouldn't have to force it. And if you if you just try all the orientations, if you can't remember the golden triangle with the with the with the triangle corner, then it'll only fit in one direction. And then once we're done, we're gonna latch this guy back down. And you can see I still have this protective socket cover that'll get popped out automatically. And uh, you're, you're gonna want to keep this somewhere safe so that if you ever do take your computer apart or if you have to transport it and you want to take out the CPU for whatever reason. You don't want this guy to protect the pins on top, the pins within your your socket, because if those pins get damaged, it's really hard to fix them. If those get bent out of shape even a little bit, it's kind of tedious. It's not impossible to fix, but you'll be glad if you can avoid that situation. All right, so our CPU is installed, and now let's see. Oh, I did forget to grab the back plate of this. Let me see if I can grab one of those real quick. All right, actually, we actually might end up just using the stock Intel cooler right now. 
I'm realizing that I don't have the connective plate back here that we need to install our other cooler. So for the time being, simply because I'm not sure I can find one right, right away, we'll just go with this. But in the meantime, we can install our RAM. So right now, these we're using our Vengeance LPX DDR4 RAM. This is 2400 megahertz, 2 by 16. Now, I actually, um, so we have two sticks here, which means we'll run our RAM in dual channel, which is great. Um, and so the, as you can see, there's two sticks of RAM, but there's four slots here. And the order in which you put in the RAM does matter in terms of performance. Um, in order to achieve that dual channel memory, you do have to install them in very particular slots. And that does vary from motherboard to motherboard. And I'm just going to make an assumption right now, since I don't have this motherboards um, manual available, that we're going to put them in these two slots. This typically is the, the common two spots that I'm used to working with that um, allow for dual channel. And we can always test it to make sure that we are achieving that dual channel. And yep, this is DDR4. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone who's, who joined who I haven't, haven't said hi to. Um, yeah, we are going to use our stock cooler probably for right now, unless I can very quickly go and run to grab the backplate so that I can screw this guy into you. I forgot to grab that prior to starting the live. But if I can, if I can find one, we'll, we'll, use, we'll, we'll use it. Um, actually, let's do that now. Let's see. I'll take you guys on a little tour of my little work, workshop. It's a little messy, as it always is. But this is the main desk that I'm working at. Um, I just recently got this second table so that I can put more stuff. If you've recognized a lot of my videos, um, this is the computer that I did the speed building. This is, oh man, this motherboard, this little setup here has gone through so much. This was the computer that I dumped mineral oil on. This was the computer that I built underwater and it survived. This is the computer that I ran in a dishwasher that I ran inside of a freezer. Oh no, that's not this one, but this guy has survived a lot and it's still kicking. So that guy's a champ. And then this is the guy that I use for all my thermal paste alternatives, which also has somehow survived everything I've thrown at it so far. All right, so we are looking for a back plate so that we can install our cooler. If we can't find one, we'll just have to use a stock one, which is okay, just for this build. Because I, as, as I mentioned, this build right now is just for fun. And um, like I said, I just need it for a video. Here's some more of my stock. Got a bunch of cases here. Um, I actually have an unopened one that I bought a long time ago that I need to open to make sure everything's there. Um, so let's see. I think I have some plates here. This is for an AMD motherboard. Not confident I can find one in the next 30 seconds. All right, we'll take a look back over here. Oh, did I miss another donation? Apologies if I did. Dr. Deity, Dream has more subs than Dant DM. Span F in chat. <laughs> yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Let's see. Andrew, looks like you need a moderator. You're probably right. You're probably right. This is my first foray into streaming on li uh, live streaming on YouTube. So pardon, pardon the stream if it's not at, at quality. If, uh, if anyone wants to moderate, I don't actually know how that process works on here, but I appreciate the, the offering. All right, you know what, guys? I'm sorry, we're gonna have to go with stock. F's in the chat for that as well. All right, so can't find the plate. Next time we build one, we'll do a plate. All right. All right, so we'll, we'll do that now too. So we'll apply some thermal paste so that our CPU stays nice and cool. I don't, let's see. Um, I don't plan on using this computer too much. So we could actually put a thermal paste alternative 
but I don't have anyone's handy. I've tried a bunch of stuff as thermal paste alternatives. That has been some of the most fun I've, I've had building computers. What kind of pattern do you guys want? Do you guys like the dot? Do you guys like an X? Do you like something fancier than that? I see a lot of X's, a lot of dots. X is, X is my favorite. Dot is also a classic. All right, we'll go with X. X is the one that I use for the majority of um, whenever I'm building a computer um, for friends or uh, like in my personal computer, I also use the X. Honestly, it's mostly, it's more uh, quality or quantity of thermal paste than the pattern itself in terms of what's most effective. You want to you wanna just make sure that you have enough that covers the entirety of the CPU without it overflowing too much, ideally. How does moderation work? How do I, like, how do I assign mods? How does that even work? Anyone know? I certainly don't, if you can't tell. Something I'll definitely look into. All right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So in this case, we have our thermal paste applied. We have a RAM applied. I'm sorry, RAM installed. Now we're just going to use the stock cooler. Sorry, anyone who's cringing at using an Intel stock cooler. Um, and the key here is to remember to actually plug in the cooler. And so where this plugs in, you know, this is just a normal fan header here. And so we need we want to we want to plug it into the correct spot. So in this case, there's a handful of different options that we have, but only there's there's, there's one that controls um, the main CPU fan, and that's right here. Sorry, it's a little hard to read here, but it says CPU underscore fan one on this guy right here. As you can see, this guy right here, this 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 plug for our fan can actually fit inside of any of these fan plugs, even the ones that say CHA underscore fan, like this guy right here, which stands for chassis fan, which is a case fan. And as you can see, if we plug in our CPU fan, it does actually fit seamlessly. It's meant to do that. However, the CPU fan header has much more control and responsiveness to temperatures of the CPU. So that's why we do that. Oh, I missed another dono. Dr. TD says, do you know any good CPU air coolers for an Intel i7? Yeah, let me, let me show you guys my favorite air cooler. It's a actual one. Um, and actually I have a couple over here, which let's see. Oh yeah. I like this guy because of the size. It's like, it's very compact and I think it looks pretty good. Um, I like Noctua a lot. Um, I don't actually, well, they're, 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 they're brown fans. You know, it doesn't always match up with, with the aesthetic of your build, but this here, this Noctua NHU9S, it's a, it's a, it's a Chromex black. So it's all black. It's very sleek. And also very small, very quiet, very good. So that's what I recommend. Thanks for the question and thanks for the dono. All right. Um, I, I appreciate everyone asking for the for the mod stuff. I'll definitely figure that stuff out for the next one. Right now, I will. It's a bit overwhelming to make that decision without having thought through it. So I appreciate everyone for bringing it up, though. Okay, so let's install this guy. Let me uh, let me take this guy. We'll just plop this guy right on top of it. I'll line up all of these plugs with the holes, and we'll click it down. Hello, everyone. In case I haven't said hi yet. Sorry, apologies for the spam. I I have not set up any type of mods or anything. Can I change slow mode? Is that something I can do while I'm streaming? Let me see. I'm not sure it is. Apologies for that, guys. I am uh, just beginning all of this, so. 
I'll get better at it. I'll ne next time I live stream, we'll have mods. Next time, we'll make sure that the chat isn't as spammy, or we'll do the slow mode if that's if that's the ideal way to solve that. But for now, enjoy the chaos. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> all right, so we'll install this this uh, this stock cooler, and we'll make sure to plug in the the cable for our CPU fan into the CPU fan header. Perfect. So now. Oh, we also have an NVMe SSD. I was going to say that was about it that we can install before the case, but we actually still have this NVMe. So this is our SSD. This will have our windows on it. Um, for the sake of this build, we're just going to get to the BIOS boot screen, which so this isn't totally necessary for that, but um, it's always fun to have a full build. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this into the M.2 slot that's on our motherboard which this actually might have, I think this only has one. So here it is right here. And the way that we're going to install this is we're going to need a really small screwdriver because right now I like to keep my M.2 screws inside of the, the slot so I never lose them. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to, this also only installs one orientation. So in this case, you can see that there's a little gap here, and then there's this small section and this large section of pins. We're just going to want, want to make sure that that can slot right into the M.2 slot on the motherboard. As you can see, that kind of slots right in. And if we flip it around, it physically can't fit. So again, if you're building for the first time and you're concerned that you might be installing this to the wrong orientation, just know that it can only go in one way. It doesn't require that much force. So if you feel like you are really forcing it, maybe try a different orientation. Okay, so did I just lose the screw? You don't see where I put that screw? So once we have this installed, we're going to want to reapply that screw, which I put down and now it's gone forever. Cool, cool, cool. It's funny how that happens. It's funny how they just disappear, especially those tiny little guys. Huh. This is why if you're building your PC, you should be much more careful than I'm being right now. One thing you can do to help organize where all the screws are is to use something like um, an ice cube tray or um, you know, use cups to, to put all of these screws in particular places. So I use them. Okay, yeah, thank you for the comment. It is on the board. <laughs> Careless me. So now we're just going to want to push this guy down and re-screw the screw onto the board. And with that, we already have the standoff applied. So there we go. Now we have our M.2 SSD installed. You guys talking about ice cube? Oh yeah, ice cube tray, yeah. Um, it's helpful just because it has all the separations so you can put all of one screw in certain areas because the main screws that you'll be dealing with um, if you have a CPU cooler, that'll have its own, if, you know, if you have one that isn't stock and, and requires a bunch of screws, um, like all of these screws are from some AIO all-in-one liquid cooler, so you have all of these screws. You'll also need screws to screw in your motherboard into your case. You'll also need screws to plug in, to, to screw in your power supply into your case, and then your fans as well. I think those are the main ones. I'll be honest, guys, I have no idea how to enable slow mode. I'm on my phone. So if anyone can tell me how to do it, I definitely will. But if not, we're just we're just going to enjoy the chaos. <laughs> Sorry if it's too annoying. <laughs> All right, back to it. Let's uh, let's grab our case. This is a Thermaltake H200, I believe. So just a big old, you know, normal tempered glass case. Nothing too special, nothing too out of the ordinary. It has, the one thing it does have is it has this swivel um, window as opposed to something that comes completely off. So if I'm careless, you might see my reflection in this at some point. I tend to stream every now and again on TikTok and I have 
definitely done a face reveal accidentally on there. Whoops. All right, so here's our case. And so the, the main considerations when you're buying or planning your first PC is compatibility between, there's basically two, two pieces of compatibility that you really need to think about. CPU and motherboard is, is the biggest. And the second is motherboard and case. Because not all motherboards fit in all cases. And so this is a full ATX motherboard, the size of it. Um, it's called a full ATX. If we look over to my right, you can see that we have different sizes of motherboards right here. You see how this one's much smaller. Um, this is a micro ATX. I don't have any mini ITX out here, but you can see there's you know there's varying sizes. So you can imagine if this motherboard right here barely fits into a case, there's no way that this one will. And so, you know, when you're building a PC for the first time, one of one of the one of the pieces of compatibility that you want to keep in mind is the size of the motherboard and the size of the case. They use the same nomenclature. So in this case, this is a this is a full ATX motherboard. In this case, is uh, it's it's called a midsize, but it supports full ATX. And so, what we're going to do? Actually, I almost forgot something. So even before we install the motherboard, what we need to do is install the I/O shield, which is the essentially it's the gate that blocks out dust, and I think that's all it actually really does. So I wouldn't say it's completely necessary. It is also in the uh, um, IO shield. Yeah, uh, this guy, what we're going to do is we're just going to plug it in. in or sorry, we're just going to push it in the back. We want to make sure that we line it up with how the motherboard is going to be oriented. So we're just going to go just like that. And then we're just going to plop this guy down here. Did I accidentally re reveal my face? You guys are lucky. Although I might also just post this video to YouTube. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I've never been against showing my face, but I've also just, it's kind of fun to be secretive about it. All right, so we installed this guy here. I believe that is installed properly. If not, we'll find, find out soon enough. And now we're gonna take our motherboard and we're gonna plop them down right here. And the goal here is to align the motherboard with the standoffs, which are the areas that we can screw um, screws into to, uh, to secure the motherboard to the case. So with that, let me grab some screws. Hopefully I have some of these screws that we can use to mount. So here we go. I just have a, a handful of these. Generally, these will come with your motherboard or with the necessary parts. So your power supply, I think, will come with some. Your case might come with some as well. I always forget which ones, uh, which which components actually come with the necessary screws. Um, the motherboard, this motherboard is a Z390 Phantom Gaming 4SIB, 4S1B. So it's an LGA1151. So now I am just going to screw on. Actually, I'm just going to use one of these bigger screwdrivers. All right. So now it's, it might be a little hard to see here, but there's a handful of holes on the motherboard itself. And that's where screws can fit in. And what I'm going to look for here is where the standoffs are peering through those holes that will allow me to actually screw something down. So in this case, there's one in the top right, one in the top left, a bunch more. But for the sake of this build, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna secure it with maybe even two, maybe three, maybe four. We'll see how generous I feel in terms of securing this guy. If you're building a computer at home for your personal use, definitely take advantage of screwing in and securing your motherboard with all of the all of the screws provided. But this is really just to secure the motherboard to the case so that it doesn't fall off. Thank you, 
seven ABC for the two dollar donation. I really appreciate that. He says this chat is chaos. <laughs> I totally agree. An amazing voice. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, this 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 chat might be chaos. So enjoy it while well, while well, it lasts. I'll say. Next time around, we'll have moderators. We'll have maybe slow mode. So spam while you can. <laughs> Um, I appreciate everyone's nice comments. It's It's been so much fun doing all of these experiments and seeing how many other people also enjoy seeing them. Because honestly, like this, this stuff is so much fun for me. I wasn't certain that people were going to enjoy watching all these experiments and stuff. So the fact that you guys do makes me really happy. And I really appreciate the support. All right, our screws are screwed into the standoffs. It's not the most, secure, most secured motherboard, but it will do. So at this point, what do you guys want to do next? So this is generally when I would probably do some cable management. So we'll, have, we'll probably plug in our uh, motherboard, or sorry, our power supply and route some of these cables because once you include more and more stuff, it only gets harder and harder to, to install some of that stuff. Dr. Deity says, can you use gum as thermal paste? I think I, I, I think I did do a video on that. I used bubble gum um, and chewed it up and applied it as thermal paste. Let me look at my notes to see how it, how it fared. So let's see, gum hit 105 degrees Celsius under load, which is very hot, almost the hottest that I've ever done. Maybe, maybe tied for the hottest I've ever done. Um, for context, the same build with thermal paste hits around hits hits below 50 degrees Celsius. So bubble gum is not a good thermal paste alternative. But it didn't get as sticky as I thought it would. If you guys saw like the marshmallow or the gummy bear, those two are some of the most messy experiments that I've done with that thermal paste alternative stuff. Bubble gum didn't get as didn't get as messy as that. I think it all stuck together um, much better. All right, this is this is the power supply that we're going to be using for this guy. Sorry, I'm missing a bunch of questions. Um, Cryptic uh, YT said, I might ask this question before. Um, what was the first PC build? So the very first PC build that I made is actually down here in the basement. I can, I can show you. I built it in 2013, I believe. I've since replaced it and upgraded it. But this was the very first, oh, and you guys are gonna laugh so much at this cable management because this case is not conducive to <laughs> um, uh, good cable management. But this was my first build. I took out the graphics card at this point. And I'll take this over to the light so you can, or I'll, I'll set it down so you guys can see it a little better. But I believe the, I believe that the processor is an i5-3570, if that sounds right. Um, I had a GeForce GTX 760, I believe. And this thing, the reason I built it was to play Call of Duty um, on PC, Call of Duty 4. I wanted to hit 240 FPS so that I could jump farther, which was a thing in old video games. Your FPS impacted how far you could jump in strafe. I like that guy there. But yeah, this was the first computer that I ever built. And I've since built many, many more. Um, I think I missed another don't know. Um, let's see. Um, Dr. Deity again, thank you so much for the $5. Says, maybe jam as thermal paste. You know, I have not used jam. I should try that one. That sounds fun. Sounds messy, but it's fun. I like making a mess. Um, let's see. Jonathan says, Yeaster, did you go to college for an IT slash computer science degrees? Spot on. My undergrad is in computer science. And then I ended up going back for a master's, but a master's in design. So I have a undergrad in computer science and a master's in human computer interaction. So a lot of computers in my day of studying. What were we doing? Oh yeah, power supply. Let's do that. So I'm gonna move some of this stuff. 
and we're going to want to get down to this back side so that we can plug in the power supply. Mayonnaise as thermal paste. Ooh, I almost tried that one. I really, um, I, I really need to. I when when I did the condiments, th uh, thermal paste. When I did the ketchup and mustard, I was I, I was meaning to use mayonnaise as well, and actually had it down in my workshop. And the issue is, I only had uh, vegan mayonnaise, veganaise, and I brought, I really wanted to try it with normal mayonnaise. And so I was I had it on my list to go buy some. But clearly have not done that. But good suggestion. What else would you guys want to see as thermal paste alternative? I've done a bunch of stuff. I'll list off some of the stuff that I've done. I've done toothpaste, peanut butter, hair gel, honey, lotion, vapor rub, gum, like chewed up bubble gum, aloe vera, glue, aluminum foil. And then most recently the gummy bear and the marshmallow. All right, why is there a fan here? Huh. Well, just chilling. Maybe that's because it was hard to get out. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna wanna do is, and probably also mix around and plug in some of the uh, IO cables, or sorry, front panel cables. But we're gonna place this guy so that the fan can exhaust there in the vent. This cable management, I can already tell you, is probably going to be pretty messy. But the thing that I've learned with cable management is that your case can just help so much with cable management. And so if anyone has struggled with cable management in the past, I do not blame you. And I think it's okay. Don't be too harsh on yourself because some cases make it much easier than others. If you're stuck with a case that doesn't have any type of, you know, assistance when it comes to cable management, it's definitely not the easiest thing in the world. So don't be so hard on yourself. And if it works, it works, you know? All right. So I'm just going to use some more of these screws to screw in this power supply. And then we'll route some of these cables. The main ones that we'll be looking at are the motherboard power, CPU power, GPU power. And then we don't have any storage outside of our NVMe M.2, which doesn't need separate discrete power. If we had a hard drive or a SATA SSD that wasn't M.2, then we would need to uh, plug that in as well. But because of uh, the M.2 NVMe, we don't need to. And now the cable management part. This already has a whole bunch of these um, secured cables. I might have to cut those off or not. Let's see. This is probably my least favorite part about building PCs, I would say. Um, it's the part that is, the I would say, the most variable between different builds, different cases, different, um, basically it's that, where it always seems easier than it's going to be. And everything else is like building Legos. And this is like building more complicated Legos. <laughs> All right, I've got to figure out the best way to do this while also showing you guys so you can see. All right, so one thing that I that I do know is that the CPU power plugs in at the top of the motherboard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna route this cable up towards the top of the case so that it comes out the other side. Use milk as AIO liquid, ooh. I like where your head's at. I do have many AIOs that I could test with. And then this is motherboard power. We're gonna route this guy. This this will end up at the left side, or sorry, the right side of the motherboard. So I'm gonna route that where that is. And then our our PCIe power. This is for our graphics card. 
assuming our 1070 will require eight pins. It's probably going to require all of this. For the time being, I'm just going to cut this apart. This was from a previous build, so it was already, they had all the cables exactly where they wanted them. Me, not so much, at least not yet. So we're going to wrap these guys very similar to how we wrapped around our motherboard power. So for the time being, we'll just plop this guy right there. It's not going to be pretty, but it will be functional. That is the goal. And then we're going to have a few cables that we have for our case to work properly. So in this case, we have our, I believe this is USB header. We're going to have our power button and stuff, but maybe we can do something more fun for our power button. Maybe instead we can install the remote control. That'd be fun. Let's do that. So instead of just using like the case button to turn on and off the computer, let's use this, which is a remote control. But it basically uses Bluetooth and an adapter and then shorts out the power pins. Oh, I think I saw someone ask if I have a Discord. I do have Discord. If you go to mrusr.com, there'll be a link to the Discord. It's called Frame Paste. It's a, it's a Discord server that I created with Scamble, who's a TikTok creator. And we talk about video games and we talk about building PCs. We show sort of like behind the scenes or teasers stuff. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's super active right now, very similar to like streaming. Um, Discord, owning a Discord server is something that I'm also very green on. So still, still uh, learning all the ropes as they say. That's okay, because you gotta learn somehow, right? All right, so that's the majority of the cables. We'll flip it around to, in, to see how everything should be plugged in, hopefully that all these cables stay so that we can easily plug them into the motherboard. All right, let's see what we're working with now. All right. Oh, wait, sorry. I'm reading some messages. Andrew says something about moderating and stuff. Yeah, I'm on my phone right now, so I don't actually even see a, re a way to, to click some of that stuff. But like I said, I'll fix it for the next time. I'll find some, some people to moderate. Apologies if the chat is not the ideal experience for the time being. I appreciate the patience. All right, so now that we routed some of these cables, this is the motherboard power right here. This is the biggest guy, I believe it's 24 pin. And we're just going to want to plug that guy in. This also only plugs in one way. So again, if you're building a PC for the first time and you're concerned that you might be plugging these, these cables in incorrectly, just know that they can only go in one way. So if, you're, if you seem to be forcing it a lot, you seem like you're putting a lot of weight into it and it's not plugging in and clicking, maybe try flipping it around because um, there's actually some pretty clever designs of these pins themselves that only allow them to be plugged in a single orientation. All right, so we'll plug in our USB so that works. And I'll show you guys how to install this Bluetooth remote control so that we don't need to press the button on our case. Oh, and I actually got this really exciting tool that I'm, that I still need to, uh, to play with. It's a, it's almost like a, like a, like a, like a missile launch type of button that you might see in like a military base where you get to flip open the switch and then there's there's like a really fancy important looking military switch to launch a missile missile i got one of those and i'm going to try to install it so that you can use it as a computer switch as a power switch which i'm pretty excited about so for 
this guy, we'll install this guy first, and then we will install our GPU. And after that, we're getting pretty close to done. So this guy, as I mentioned, is a Bluetooth adapter. And then on the end of it, as you can see, there's these little, these little plugs that we can plug into power and reset. So if we also have a remote that is compatible with this adapter, we can just press the power button and everything should turn on. We'll find out if it actually does after we put this. Hopefully it does. And if not, we'll figure out what's wrong with it and then fix it. I gotta say, I really appreciate all you, all you guys sitting here and watching. It's really fun to, to do all this with an audience and to, and to chat with everyone. So I know I'm missing, I'm probably missing a lot of questions. I, I might do some more of these where it's more casual, where I'm just doing some experience, ex experiments and uh, have more focus on the chat itself. For the sake of this video, I really just wanted to build this computer that I have, that I need for, um, um, that I need for tomorrow. And uh, I figured I'd just do it live, so. In the future, we'll definitely pay more attention to the the chat, I promise. All right, so now I'm just trying to figure out the right pins that I wouldn't want to short out with this. So I'm looking at the very small lettering and I believe it's these guys right here. If not, we'll switch it. And with that, we will now install our graphics card, which is an EV, EVGA 1070. So we'll plop this guy in the topmost PCIe slot. The reason why to do the topmost is because it has the most bandwidth generally. If you install your graphics card or have your graphics card installed in one of the lower PCIe slots, you might actually be sacrificing performance. All right, so need a couple more screws to secure this guy. And hi, everyone. I'm seeing a lot of hi spammed in chat, so hello. Hope you're all doing well. What's my Twitch name? I actually, I, I think I do have a Twitch under this this username. I haven't done anything on it. Um, would you guys Would you guys like to see live streams of stuff like this on there as opposed to here? Just curious. Live streaming in general isn't something that I've done a lot of. I, on from time to time, I go live on 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 TikTok. Um, and just you know, if I'm ever working on an experiment or something like that, sometimes I go on there just to show off what that process is like, or if I'm cleaning up after an experiment, or if people if people have um, you know random suggestions, I'll take them and I'll just do them. But uh, I, I find myself, you know, chatting a lot more and getting much off topic, much more off topic than what I'm doing now. Because again, my goal right now is to build the computer. What CPU? Okay, yeah. So I will uh, let me let me list off all of the parts again. So it's been a while since since we started started this build. So inside of this build, it's an Intel build. So the processor here is an Intel i5 9600KF. Um, and the motherboard itself that supports it is this Z390 Phantom Gaming. So the LGA 1151 motherboard. We have 16 gigs of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM, Corsair Vengeance LPX. Our power supply that we just installed is a Corsair RM 650i. Um, graphics card, as you can see, EVGA GeForce GTX 1070, which is an eight gig card, I believe. And this case is a Thermaltake H200. And then we're just using the stock cooler for the time being because I couldn't find the back plate to secure any other type of cooler. All right, I believe that's, that's everything. Do you guys wanna see if it works? We didn't actually plug in this fan header, so this fan won't spend a life, but we can do that right now too. Looks like there's an open slot right here, even though I think it says CPU fan too. We'll plug that guy in right here. 
think I did everything. The front IO is really ugly uh, internally, Bruno says. Yeah, this guy up here. That's the little PCB that controls like the power button on the case. That controls the uh, USB slot on the case and those types of things. You know, generally wouldn't see it if you're looking at the computer from a normal angle. So I'm not too super concerned about it for the time being. Um, all right. Uh, Nadell says YouTube lives are much better for tick or are, are much better, but TikTok is still really good to promote your content. Yeah, you know I I actually like I've I've enjoyed TikTok as a platform to make content. Um, you know I've a while ago I started making this type of YouTube content, but the process always felt more overwhelming to me. And then TikTok came around, just kind of started randomly posting videos there, because it's just so quick and easy. And uh, haven't really turned back. All right, so now we are going to plug in our power supply into an outlet. And if we did everything correctly, this computer will turn on. If we did not do everything correctly, it will not. That's how that works. So. I clicked the button, nothing happened. So another way that we can, so and, that, and that's because I have this remote. So another thing that we can do to try to power on or to figure out which of these uh, pins is the right power um, connecting pins that we need to short out is we can use any middle object. And this is just shorting out the pins. So in this case, if we wanna know which of these pins are the power ones, as you can see, I just touched two pins and everything spawned to life. So that's either the reset or the power switch. And now we know. So that's spinning. Nice, guys, it's working. Obviously, we did not plug any type of output into this computer. So what we're going to do is I'm going to power off. But the fact that it's running is a really good sign. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach these pins into where Sorry, these plugs into where the switch actually worked. So now if I press this button, <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> Better plug in the wrong one. Power switch is what I want. Oh, I didn't turn the power supply on. All right, so now what we're also going to do is plug in our monitor. We're using our gorgeous Dell monitor here. And we're going to use just our basic input here. What GPU is that? It's the GTX 1070. And so for here, we need to plug in our monitor into our GPU. So we're just going to plop that guy in. Then we're going to turn on our motherboard, or sorry, turn on our monitor. I'll zoom out a little bit so you guys can see that. We also are going to want a couple things so we can control the computer. Actually, we'll just need one thing. We'll just grab a keyboard. So in this case, we'll just plug this guy in. Ooh, I just got a comment saying, please use sticky tack as thermal paste. That's a cool suggestion. I haven't used that before. Um, I wonder if it would get more or less sticky when it gets hot. It's a good question. Sticky tack is fun, if I remember it. All right. All right, keyboard, plugged in, check. Monitor, plugged in, check, but is it to the wrong source? So we'll add it to the right source, check. DVI connector, it's very dated, but it works. All right, guys. So if we did everything correctly, again, now we will switch on our power supply with the button on the power supply. If we clicked the right switch, or if we plugged in the right switch into this controller receiver, then we would press the power button. It should spin to life, which it does. We're doing it, we're doing it. Um, and ideally we get an output, yay, it posts, wonderful. 
Nice work, everybody. Thank you for sticking along with me as we built this. I hear this guy rubbing against the fans. That's not good. Um, oh, and actually, I do have my SSD plugged in. So I actually don't, I don't want that to go all the way to Windows login. I want to get to BIOS. So I'm actually going to shut off the computer. I'm going to turn it back on. And what I'm going to do to get into BIOS is I'm going to spam the delete key on my keyboard so that even before the computer can access the SSD that's plugged in to say, oh, we should load Windows or we should load um, you know, whatever other operating system is installed on that SSD, we can get into BIOS, which is the lowest level interface that we can communicate with our motherboard. And so this is a way, if you're building a computer for the first time, you can view a few things to see if every if all your parts are being read. Yeah, a majority of your parts is are being read in the correct manner. So in this case, a few things that I'm going to be looking for is uh, the RAM and the CPU. So in this case, as I mentioned, or at least you know what we had plugged into this was an i5-9600KF. And as we can see here, the motherboard is reading Intel i5-9600KF. And you can also see what it's currently clocked at. If we wanted to do any type of overclocking, we would also do that inside of this BIOS screen. But it's a wonderful sign that it's reading the, the, uh, the processor as exactly what we thought it was. You can also see that the total memory is 16 gigabytes, which is, again, exactly what we were planning on seeing. We have two sticks of 8 gigs so that combine make 16. Um, we're also seeing that it's Corsair, and it is currently being clocked at 2400. Now, generally, what I'd recommend is looking into making sure that your RAM is being run at the advertised speed. So in this case, if um, you know our RAM in our computer was said it was running at, say, like 1600 or something like that, but if we look on the RAM itself, it says 2400, what you can do is you can tell the motherboard to run that RAM at a different speed. And since we know that the manufacturers say that it will run properly at 2400, you can also feel safe to say that, hey, motherboard, run the RAM at that speed. But that's wonderful. And it's also taking advantage of dual channel. So that means that we knew that we plugged in the, the RAM in the correct, uh, the correct slots. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd call this a success. We built the computer. It turned on. Um, a few things that I would upgrade if, uh, if I was planning on using this you know, long term is obviously add some more fans. Right now, I just have one exhaust fan, which if I'm not using this, it's not going to be an issue. But if I'm playing some really intense video games, this thing's going to get really hot. And so to keep things cool, generally what I like, what I prefer um, in terms of fans inside of a PC, what I recommend is having two exhausts, two intake. So having, you know, an exhaust up top and an exhaust out in the, you know, in the back, and then having two intake fans at the front. And uh, if you do that, you'll have a really nice neutral airflow that'll flow all over your parts, which is good. The other thing that I would upgrade with this build is I would change the stock cooler to say like a Noctua cooler. Um, if I wanted to go the air cooler route or some, some like 240 millimeter AIO, and then I would replace this guy with that, um, with that radiator. But yeah, it works guys. Um, Thank you, thank you everyone who's who stuck around and everyone who joined. Um, that's that's all I have for the for the live today. Um, I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, sticking with me and just enjoying the chaos of 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 chat as I don't have moderators, as you might tell right now, and um, you know, no slow chat enabled or anything like that. So thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for watching my videos and chatting with me and everything. So I hope you guys had as much fun as I did and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.